So our next discussion is going to be over settling with power. And um, a lot of people like to break these two things or try to make it into two separate things, that there's the vortex ring state and then there's settling with power. In other words, when we talk about vortex ring state, we're going to, and we're going to talk about it extensively, that how you get vortices that form out on the end of the rotor that kills off the lift and the aircraft gets into quite a uh, rather dramatic descent rate, all right? And that's vor vortex ring state. I still refer to that as settling with power because all the time I've grown up around helicopters, that's been settling with power. Now all of a sudden everybody wants to split the two apart and call settling with power where you get into a situation where you don't have enough power to stop the aircraft at the end of the descent. Let me give an idea. To get into settling with power, to get into the vortex ring state, you gotta be going slow, typically about 10 knots or less, right? So if we fly this approach, and we, we fly an approach, and we're coming in at say 22 to 24 knots in a descent, and we're way down on the collective, and we're screaming out of the sky here, and I get down at the bottom of the um, approach, and I wait too long to start raising the collective, I can get to a point where I don't have enough power to actually stop the descent and can slam into the ground with the aircraft, all right? I don't refer to that as settling with power. I refer to that to being a dumbass and not realizing the lack of or the limitations of the amount of power of the aircraft that you're flying, all right? So the two things are very different to me. That's, again, that's, okay. So what's the definition of power? Power means the, uh, a force applied over a particular unit of time, right? So if you're shooting this approach and you're screaming out of the sky like that and you wait till nearly the last minute to start raising the collective and you're applying that, that energy over a very short period of time, you will not have enough power or stopping power to stop the aircraft and you're going to hit hard, right? So in an effort to avoid that, you need to start getting in on that collective earlier, getting your descent rate slowed down over a much longer period of time and you won't run out of power and slam into the ground. again. That's not, that's not what I refer to as settling with power. Settling with power for me is a vortex ring statement, so that's what we're gonna talk about now, all right? Every wing that produces lift has a vortex out on the end of the wing, and it really doesn't matter whether it's an airplane or a helicopter, all right? If you guys remember from, uh, if you were an airplane pilot and you were taught all about um, vortexes that are formed or vortices rather that are formed out on the end of a wing, you know that on an airplane when it's heavy and slow that the vortex out on the end of that wing is quite sizable. The reason that it's quite sizable is because that airplane is coming in at a high angle of attack. It has to have a high angle of attack because it's heavy and it's going slow. All right? When that occurs they have a huge vortex formed out on the end of the, uh, the uh, wing on the airplane. Well guess what? The same process happens on a rotor wing. Just because it's going in a circle doesn't make it any different, right? Any wing that's producing lift, all right, has a vortex out on the end of the wing. What factor causes that vortex to get bigger? It's quite simple. Angle of attack. As you increase the angle of attack on that wing, the vortex on the end of the ring wing is going to become larger, all right? So why is it so critical on a helicopter? Well, Where's most of the lift of a helicopter rotor produced? It's out on the, the last one third or one half of the, of the rotor, all right? Remember that um, as you double the airspeed across the lifting surface, everything else being the same, that the amount of lift is quadrupled, all right? So if we come one fourth of the way out the rotor right here and we're producing one unit of lift, when we double that to halfway out the rotor, we're producing four units of lift, all right? When we double that again out to the tip, we're producing 16 units of lift, right? Now, I'm lying to you a little bit because of what's called washout, where they actually decrease the angle of attack as, uh, as you go along the span of the rotor uh, blade. But still, most of the rotor, or most of the lift produced on a rotor blade is produced out here on the last half of the rotor blade, all right? If we get into a situation where we're going quite slow and we're in a descent, <clears throat> then the upcoming air, as we slow down, as we slow way down, and the air is coming up at the rotor blade, that increases the angle of the rotor blade and increases the vortex produced, all right? When that vortex starts to increase, it starts to kill off the lift at the end, on the end of the rotor blade, all right? Well, once that begins, once it starts to sag and descend, then what, what's happening to your angle of attack? It's increasing even more. So what happens to the vortex? It gets even bigger, which makes it sink even more, which makes the, 
angle of attack increase more and the vortex get even bigger. So once it begins, you have to do something to get out of the vortex ring state. <clears throat> and typically, the easiest way of that something is just to get the nose down and get some airspeed, all right? And we'll talk here in just a bit about the, the difference between just getting the nose down and getting some forward airspeed and flying out of it versus a Bouchard recovery technique uh, here in, in greater detail in just a bit. But essentially, if you just get your nose down, and a lot of people teach, okay, lower the collective, get the nose down. I found out that essentially what happens when you start people teaching people about lowering the collective and get your nose down like that, they'll overdo it on the collective. They'll get way into a big descent rate, and they concentrate more on lowering the collective than they do just getting the nose down to get the airspeed up. Just correcting by getting some forward airspeed will get you back out of the vortex ring state. All right?